And as you get closer to the lamps, which means closer to this, you know, this deck here, you know, the, the next tier, then you shrink the volume of air, um, which, which when, you know, when you're, when you're pushing transpiration this way, when you're trying to keep your feeding frequencies high and you're trying to achieve this high amount of light, you, you end up getting um, a microclimate very quickly because this, you shrink the volume of air, it's easy, more easily affected by the rate of transpiration, um, your feeding frequencies, and the presence of heat here in your lamps. So that's like a low gutter greenhouse. Exactly. You know? Right. Exactly. Yep. So, so um, you know, the strategic supply of more dehumidified air is a, a very important thing to think about. So we we had VAS going when we first fired this place up, with um, you know all of our environmental supply coming into the to the space as we always had, and it was calced perfectly for the amount of lights, the amount of plants. Um, that we had in this space, but we were consistently five to eight percent higher relative humidity on the lower tier than we were on the top, and I couldn't figure it out. You know, uh, uh, heat rises. You know, um, like why are we and we're calced correctly? Like how is this not consistent top to bottom? Um, so what we did was we we installed some drops on our dehumidification system to make that dehumidified air more accessible for vertical air solutions oh is and it so, just like short cycling a bit it was short cycling yeah. right so as you it, because the same thing happens up top right you're pushing yeah. you're building this big cube within a cube and so you're supplying everything you know through your ceiling which is typically what we did historically and so now this brings up another idea of supplying at different elevations, right? Sure. So you can supply at different elevations towards the head unit, um, our mixing towards chamber. Towards like the main, main highway or main exactly um, hallway. main access point yeah. to the to the room and, and uh, or to the to the aisles. So and if, then in this case, you would have um, an, an exhaust of whatever your treated air is that would be probably about head level with us or maybe a maybe another foot above our head or even if you have you know if you have multiple tiers it aligns with each tier right yeah. um you have to be careful with your conditioned air because if you put too cool of air through you know around all of this steel and metal condensate. then you're going to condensate but but ultimately if you treat that walkway like your primary mixing chamber is what i call it um and supply strategically there then our system is actually taking that that treated air and de-stratifying the microclimate and delivering that air to the canopy, right? So when we installed those drops, within 10 minutes we dropped, you know, 10% relative humidity in, at the bottom tier. Yeah. And it was a huge breakthrough for us, you know? Nice. Um, it's because, like the simplest things too, right? Oh my God, and that's some how duct, it is. Duct. And that's cannabis in a nutshell, you yeah. know? We are absolute practitioners, you yeah. know? Yeah, <laughs> we, yeah, learned, yeah. we learned from making all the mistakes in the book, you yeah. know? It's always, it always is environment though. You know, I've it noticed totally when you start is. going down the rabbit yeah. hole on something and people get caught up on their nutrients or it's always something and then it comes back to like water, light, or just the temperature and relative humidity For being sure. controlled. For sure. Um, so it's always, it's... You can put the, the best genetic in a unsuitable environment and it's not going to do anything for you. You could put a subpar genetic in a very uh, nice environment and you're still gonna make something out of that you yeah. know and so that's yep. your first line of defense in my in my opinion it's just it's just dialing in your environmental conditions and then um, you're at least gonna you know you're gonna get the production out of that genetic that it you know that it's capable of giving you so I'm gonna use the word cultivar I think a lot of people think I'm just replacing the word strain but I'm really saying like the strain or you know genotype um, plus the environment that it's in because the environment has such a dramatic oh, yeah. impact on that particular strain 